Welcome to Navigating the New Normal at Work for Managers. With the COVID-19 pandemic, we are faced with a new way of handling work, not to mention a new place for handling work. Instead of collaborating on site with our coworkers, we're finding that we're having to collaborate using shareable platforms such as Slack, Dropbox, or Google Docs. We've replaced sitting around a conference room table with Zoom calls, Microsoft Teams, or Skype calls. And we've replaced being able to access a coworker or find information quickly with having to send an endless stream of emails. And if you're like me, you've started to run out of excuses for ending these calls or these virtual meetings, and you can no longer say, I gotta run, because let's face it, the only place we can run to now is our living room or our kitchen. So how do we gain control of our work, make sure that we're more productive, and also somehow capture that social interaction that we're all craving with our coworkers? During this micro-learning session, we're gonna focus on four key elements. The first one is to make sure that we are actually comfortable with working from home. The second one is how can we manage our employees while they're working remotely? Third, we'll focus on making sure we have better meetings because heaven knows we need those. And then lastly, we'll make sure that we're focusing on the well-being of not only ourselves, but our coworkers and our employees. So let's start by managing your time while working remotely. In order for your team to be effective, they need to see that you're being effective as well and that you're confident in working from home. So if we look at three key areas or you know tips that I could share with you to work from home, the first one is I highly recommend you create your own space. And this space needs to be away from where your family would norm normally gather. So a living room or a spare bedroom is an ideal location, even your dining room if, you're, if it's a formal dining room, but stay away from the kitchen or bedroom. The second tip that I could recommend is that you need to create a routine. When I first began consulting, I felt like I was the dude from the Big Lebowski and I think I wore my bathrobe for the first three days. And you definitely wanna make sure you have a routine. So get up every day, shower, try to be up at the same time, Try to make sure that you are fixing your coffee or having the similar routine that you would if you were going to the office. Turn on your computer and then make sure that, that you have a regular start time and stop time. When possible, make sure that you're eating your lunch away from your desk and also make sure that you're taking little breaks to refresh or to be able to get outside. Those are all important. Third, make sure that you're comfortable with your new environment. And as you can see from, from my desk, I try to make sure that I have everything right at handy. Um, so I have office supplies. You've got stapler, pens, you've got binder clips, notepads, files, anything that you think that you're going to use during the course of your day. It's important that you create your new workspace with all the same accommodations. Have headphones necessary or close by, and I would definitely recommend that they're not all in tangles like mine often are. And then uh, one of the studies that I read recently recommends that you play music because that helps with adding white noise that's beneficial for reducing stress while you're working. So try to play a little music. But the goal is you're not going to be able to replace your old office. That's not what you're trying to do. Instead, you're trying to create a new space where you can still work, still enjoy yourself, but also separate from the house where you can. Now that we have you figured out, now it's time to focus on managing your team remotely. You know, before they had constant face-to-face -face interaction with you and easy access to you, and that's been taken away. So not only are you having to adjust, but so is your team. We need to recognize that employees may be struggling with access to their managers or to their coworkers, and these are important sources of information. So here's a few actions to take to better manage your workers remotely. The first one is I recommend that you look at your policies or your workplace practices and see what would apply and what doesn't because now with it being a new normal, some things need to be a little bit more relaxed. And the first one that's going to go to the wayside will be the dress code. And instead of worrying about people being dressed up, maybe it's a good time to try to have fun with it. So, you know, in one of your Zoom calls, encourage people to come in their favorite concert t-shirt or maybe you can even ask them to come with their um, you know, worst vacation shirt that you know, was either purchased for them or that they purchased. But try to have fun and recognize that in today's Zoom calls, it's oftentimes business on top and then possibly yoga pants on bottom. 
Timekeeping and attendance. It's important to understand that not everybody is going to be working 8.30 to 5, and I think that we all need to just throw that out the window. Instead, let's focus on deliverables and let's focus on being productive. And as long as your employees are meeting their timelines, I think that you're being a great manager and you're really rocking it out of the park. Something that's really important too is encouraging time off. So pay attention to your employees and realize that they no longer have that separation of work and play. So they're spending all day long with um, their families, oftentimes having to school their kids while also trying to get work done. They're probably going to get burnt out a little quicker. So pay attention to that and make sure that you encourage employees to take a day or two off here or there. They're most likely they're going to feel guilty about it, but it's your job as the manager to pay attention. And then also make sure that you're paying attention to the employment laws. How are you going to process FMLAs? What are you going to do if somebody requests an ADA accommodation? And then making sure that you are following overtime laws. So if you have hourly employees, make sure that you're monitoring their time or that you're not sending emails at the end of the day requiring their attention that could actually put them into an overtime category. And then with that, what happens if one of your employees tests positive for COVID or one of their family members? Are you prepared for making sure that they have time off through the Family First Coronavirus Response Act? So these are things that you need to be paying attention to as a manager when it comes to policies or workplace practices. So the second tip for managing your workers remotely is you need to create a schedule for check-ins. So for the group meetings, how are you going to handle those? Will it be by Zoom, Teams, Skype, etc.? How often, who will be sending out the invite? And then for individual meetings, I uh, highly recommend that you schedule one-on-ones so that you can have check-ins or progress points. Oftentimes, employees don't feel comfortable picking up the phone um, and calling you directly. So as their manager, it's good for you to reach out and you initiate the contact. Sharing files or accessing information it's a good idea to remind your employees that they're still subject to the public records law. And while we're working at home, it's possible we get a little more casual in our conversation or casual in our emails, but send out periodic reminders that we still must be cautious because all communications could be subject to public records law. We also want to make sure that we're creating a layering of communication. So it's not just uh, video conferencing software. It's not just picking up the, the phone, but um, what topic or what sensitivity will you uh, be sending out maybe IM or text messages or some other form of communication? And when do confidential messages, uh, which platform is more appropriate for them? So be able to understand there's going to be a layering of communication and when is it right to use a certain form of communication? Also, we need to pay attention to coaching and discipline and performance. So what happens if an employee is not performing well during this period of remote work? How are you going to handle that? Uh, will you pick up the phone? Will you send an email and have that discussion? Because remember, it's a learning curve for all of us. If anything goes wrong, I recommend that you reach out to your HR department so that you understand what is required of you in the event that discipline is necessary. And then for performance reviews, will you be conducting those through video conferencing or is it better by telephone? Sometimes people aren't comfortable if they're having to look at you eye to eye in video conferencing. And um, but at the same time, you have a more personal connection. So by now, we've all attended virtual or remote meetings and some of them have been run very well and others maybe not so well. So what can you do as a manager to make sure that you are running really great meetings? So there's a few tips that I'd like to share with you. The first one is whenever you're conducting video conferencing meetings, try to keep that meeting to less than an hour. People start to fade and then they also start to have some eye strain when it comes to video conferencing. Second, make sure that your team feels comfortable when they're using the software. It could be the first time that somebody has interacted in Zoom or in Microsoft Teams and maybe they need to work on adjusting the screen or possibly they haven't learned how to share slides. So give them time to tinker around and learn the software. So the third tip, make sure that you have a goal in mind anytime that you're conducting a meeting. You want to make sure that you're conducting roll call because a lot of times people will join, you won't know they've joined, and so you want to make sure that you have an account. You want to make sure that you have small talk available because this could be the only time that people are having social interaction and may feel isolated or lonely. 
Make sure that at the end of each meeting, you have key takeaways. And if there are any due dates, you wanna make sure that those are stipulated as well. So try to have a little bit of structure when it comes to the goal in mind. Next, or our fourth tip, is you wanna make sure you have ground rules. Specifically, you wanna make sure that people understand they have to be on time since this is a, a, a video conference call. You wanna make sure that they're not multitasking or on their phones, so ask that they put it away during your meeting. And then you also wanna make sure that everybody participates at least once. And then probably the most important thing to know and to share with your team is it's okay if children come in during the middle of a meeting, it's completely okay if dogs bark and these things are going to happen. So it's good that we are mindful. So our last item to cover is making sure that we're paying attention to our own well-being as well as the well-being of our coworkers and employees. For many of us, it's the first time that we've uh, engaged in a teleworking process or worked remote or worked from home. So we can be faced with anxiety, increased stress from a disruption of our workday, possibly isolation or loneliness if we were living alone or we've been separated from our family. So what are some things that you can do to try to make sure that you're taking care of yourself and ways that you can take care of your employees? And the first one is to make sure that you're creating a regular schedule and that you take breaks periodically. It's very important to have a beginning and end time and that you find a way to create a separation between working, with, uh, working at home and then also working with your family. Try to create connections. Pick up the phone with your coworkers or with your staff whenever you can so that you can hear each other's voice. You also wanna make sure that you, um, during a virtual lunch, for example, that you have some fun and maybe send through Uber Eats uh, lunch to your team and make it unexpected. There's things you can do to create those connections. A third tip for making sure that you're focusing on your well-being as well as your staff is making sure that you're getting enough sleep. It's very important. Hydrating, a lot of times when we're not able to think clearly, it's because that we're not well hydrated. Making sure that you're eating properly, more fruits and vegetables, a little less junk food. I think in the beginning of the quarantine period, we were all guilty of too many happy hours and too much junk food, so try to eat healthy. And then make sure that you are exercising as much as you can, or at least getting outside daily, and then try to reduce the amount of social media time because continuous cycle of news is not going to help anyone. And then ways that you can help your employees is to try to show empathy and understand that this could feel overwhelming for them. Uh, try not to be quite as demanding if a deadline is missed by a day or two, but instead pick up the phone and say, how can we work through this together? So you wanna be able to show some understanding. And then also, if an employee is starting to struggle, make sure that you know, through working with your HR department, how best to be able to get them help, either through uh, the health insurance program or through an EAP, because that can make the difference for somebody. So thank you for spending time with me during this micro learning session. Hopefully that you had fun or at least learned something new as we talked about how we can work better um, through this and how you can manage your employees through this new normal. And who knows, maybe in the next coming months, um, you might see me on a Zoom call or we might run into each other in a micro Microsoft Teams or Google Hangout. So best of luck to you and thanks for spending time with me.